the President Bourguignon, Egregio Presidente Profumo, and especially dear Professor Mazzucato, dear delegates, ladies and gentlemen. It is a distinct privilege to be able to welcome you all to this evening of memory and innovation. Memory of 25 years of our network of the major European academies of science and of innovation in view of the scientific achievements of this year's Madame de Staal laureate. This celebration takes place at the end of the day of work that we devoted to our General Assembly, which is held once a year in one of the members' academies. And it is perhaps telling, as we were reminded by Federal Councillor Parmelin, that the occasion of our jubilee, we are meeting in Bern as the seat of the Swiss Academies of Sciences. Academies in the plural, because in my country, everything, including scientific organizations, comes in many shapes and forms. We call it federalism, which, as again Federal Councillor Parmelin reminded us, displays very many competitive advantages in terms of what today's laureate would call the entrepreneurial state, but also here and there some minor organizational drawbacks when it comes, for example, to change management. It is telling that this year's meeting takes place in the capital of a country that combines tradition and memory, as we just heard in the introductory music, and globalism with innovation. Memory and innovation are in fact two poles of a continuum within which our European science landscape and our European academies operate. For it is emotional memory rather than chronological history that prompts a jubilee celebration, such as the one we are having tonight. Alea emerged 25 years ago in the wake of the profound political change, changes that were taking place in Europe after 1989 and at the end of the era of partition between East and West. Science became more globally interconnected and international collaboration among European academies more feasible and indeed necessary. For European academies, ALEA represented to a certain extent a response to the same institutional pre pressures that on the side of European universities prompted the Bologna reform. But with a fundamental difference, unlike universities, academies have been for centuries centers of scientific excellence, yet mostly within a national, often local perspective, with little attention devoted to international cooperation. The vision of our founding fathers was inspired by the same desire underlying the creation of the European higher education area, that is the foundation of a cohesive European community of scientists and scholars able to compete with the academic achievements of other powerhouses at world level, such as the US or we should even say now China. To lay uh, the foundation of this process, the first conferences were organized in 1990 by the Royal Dutch Academy and in 1992 by the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences, which paved the way for the creation of a pan-European organization of all academies, which is what ALEA stands for. Uh, ALEA itself was founded then at the meeting at the Académie des Sciences in Paris in 1994. Today, our network resides in Berlin, one of the most active research hubs in Europe, although, of course, most of our activity in science advice takes place in Brussels. For it is fair to state that ALEA's scope has expanded drastically in recent years to include precisely providing science advice for the European Commission. This takes place under the umbrella 
of a science advice mechanism in which the academies, through a joint program called SAPEA, work together with the European Union's chief scientific advisors to produce reports on science policy issues, such as retrieving food from the oceans or designing a common European policy on data governance. Here, I would like to honor the presence among us of Director General of Research, Jean-Éric Paquet, as the person responsible for running the scientific advice mechanism. Thank you very much for the trust you placed and Brussels placed in the academies. Based, I may say so, on the quality of the SAPEA report so far, I think that the European Commission was right to trust the academies. But that is, of course, something that it's on your side to decide. What is unique about our organization is that while our members are all European academies that have the prerequisites in terms of scientific output and critical mass to join the network, the specific nature of each academy varies very much depending on the respective country's scientific system. Some of us, of us such as the British academies in general, are learned societies with a history sometimes going back to the 17th century. Rector Leumann reminded this. Some, such as the Austrian Academy, are themselves research institutions acting de facto as mini or maxi universities. What unites, however, all these forms of academic life is the continuous quest for excellence in science in the interest of the common good. And it is precisely at the interface of scientific interest and societal benefit that we see the Academy's unique selling point in the current scientific landscape at the European and indeed at the global level. Universities produce new knowledge and convey it to young generations. Funding agencies support an increasingly expensive research and this is why I particularly honor the presence of the president of what we all agree is probably the foremost of our funding agency, the European Research Council. Thank you very much, President Bourguignon, for being with us. Uh, mainly conducted by young generations of scientists and scholars, because those of us who are scientists and scholars but who don't deserve the predicate young anymore, know that the actual research is rather being performed by our assistants in our labs or our uh, assistant professors at universities and not really uh, in many cases by those of us who are advanced in their career and at their age. Academies specialize in precisely in securing the interface between academia and the knowledge societies in which academia is embedded. So, to a certain extent, the widespread loss of trust in science and expertise that we were reminded of, if it really exists, which I personally doubt, convinced as I am that the disaffection we observe around us concerns rather the societal organization of expertise the so-called elites, then the object or the results of scientific investigation itself, if this loss of trust in scientific evidence truly exists, then it is indeed our own fault, more perhaps our own fault as academies, more than the universities or the funding agencies' fault, because it displays a fact that we should also perhaps recognize that we as academies has so far performed a less good job than we had in mind in what should actually be our core business. This means, this is actually good news, it means there's a lot of work ahead of us. Let us show Europe that we can provide a similar intellectual leadership at the crossroads of science and society as was the case in the 17th century with the Royal Society, the Leopoldina Academy, 
or the Accademia dei Lincei. Today, on, uh, during our business meeting, we, as Alea, launched a new strategy, and as is usually the case in our marketing conscious world, also a new logo for Alea. The main foci of our activity in the next years will be continuing to serve the academies and facilitating the cooperation among them to improve the framework conditions for science and research at the European level, providing independent scientific advice to policymakers and society, to facilitate good research practice everywhere in the continent, to defend academic freedom and trustworthy science, to strengthen diversity and inclusiveness, and to think and act globally. Let me now conclude by referring to this evening's main event, the award of the Madame de Staal Prize to Professor Mariana Mazzucato of University College London. Academy fellows are uh, not the only ones to produce great intellectual works in Europe. Alea Madame de Staal Prize was created to honor a scientist or scholar whose work has contributed to a deeper understanding of European identity and culture. And I think we all know that European identity and culture is EU, but also those countries on our continent that contribute to the progress of science without being in the EU. Laureates are chosen regardless of their background and assessed solely on their academic merits. As such, we have seen laureates in the past coming from legal background as well as from cultural studies or the history of science. We are happy tonight to award this prize for the sixth year running, which also marks the third year of co-sponsorship by the Compagnia San Paolo, and we have the joy of hosting the president of the Compagnia San Paolo, Professor Profumo, with us tonight, who will also address us with a few words. I would also like to thank the prize jury over the past year for having identified such a prestigious scholar. The, uh, this year's laureate will be introduced in her work by uh, President Bourguignon, but uh, let me just stress the fact that she has truly been over the last years a global uh, intellectual and scholar, originally born in Rome, left her home state to pursue an academic career in the US and now in the United Kingdom, where she occupies herself with the economics of innovation and public value. The Madame de Staal Prize not only takes it, its name from Germaine de Staal, one of the strongest and most visible women of her time, but also the values she represented in terms of curiosity, enlightenment, and exchange of thought that she represented so well. And I must admit, I also do take a little Helvetic pride in knowing that the Chateau de Coppé on Lake Geneva, you observe that uh, Federal Councillor Parmelin described her as Genevoise, so was the place where she could seek refuge when the pressure of Napoleon and her other opponents became too much to handle. In contrast with Madame de Staal, who was competing with state powers, most notably Napoleon, Marianna Mazzucato has, a, has had it in a certain way better, as the powerful state actors are turning to her in dozens to be inspired by her ideas. To name just but one of her achievements that really stands out is her work as a special advisor, advisor on mission-driven science and innovation for Commissioner Moedas a role in which she shapes the upcoming Commission's research framework program, Horizon Europe. So, if anyone in this audience, which I hope will think of writing their funding proposals uh, to be more mission-oriented, 
you will have her to blame, or if your, uh, so the request is rejected, you will have her email address uh, where to address your complaints. With this, I would like to thank you very much to you for your attention and hand over the floor to Monsieur Jean-Éric Paquet, Director General of Research of the European Commission. Thank you very much.